Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Experimental Cataclysm, the show where we talk about recent changes to the experimental version of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. First up today, we've got some semi-big news. They are moving towards a new stable release. Feature Freeze will be coming to the game in the very near future. Urk updated a post about it on the uh, GitHub page. Now, for longtime players, you probably know how this works, but there are going to be some of you who don't. Basically, Feature Freeze is somewhat loosely defined, and there are additional stages that come after that, which uh, freeze other aspects of the development. Mostly what this means is that they are gearing up for a new stable release. So at some point in the near future, future they will cut off the flow of new things to the game and they're going to start polishing existing things so that they're in a good spot for the stable release. Feature freeze specifically will stop new mechanics or other major systems from being merged into the core game and then they're going to stop adding content. They're going to shift all of their energy into uh, bug fixing things like that and then they're going to release a new stable. Now I'm usually pretty torn about these things. I personally value stable releases more than most of you probably do I think. I know that people love experimental but stable is is an important part of the game's development, uh, but on the other hand, it means that this series is going to die for several months and, until new content starts to flow again, so for me personally, it's usually a bit of a bummer. And it's worth noting that most of you are not new or casual players. You're watching a video about continued development, so it's, you know, pretty safe to say that you're invested in the project at this point and you've probably been playing for a while. So most of you have probably been through this before. It is a big deal, but in a good way, and yeah, we had to mention it. Urk explained that it would probably start on May 1st or so, and then that's when you should probably expect development to start slowing down in terms of major content. I don't really have a ton of thoughts on this. I was worried that the next stable release would come before Bionix got re-added to the game, so the fact that they've been added back in, you know, for the most part is the only thing I was really concerned about. We did just get that massive mutation rework. I am guessing that that probably still needs some playtesting and is something that might get polished as they continue to do this stuff, but those are my only real thoughts for feature freeze obviously the dev team would know a lot better than i do what needs polished and what you know major bugs there are in the game anyway we'll keep an eye on that but for now let's just get into the uh, rest of the show here so first up today we've got a new challenge trait from serious Gelrets. Now this challenge trait is called irreparable and is taken at character generation. This prevents you from healing from bandages or disinfectant and it also removes your natural healing rate. Now in the PR it mentions rare sci-fi meds, repair nanobots, or hyper metabolism as the only ways to heal. Now unfortunately I don't know what sci-fi meds or hyper metabolism that they're talking about. The only one that I'm familiar with are the nanobots. So I don't know if those things are from a mod or what exactly. Uh, but basically as far as I can tell this trait is basically just impossible to play. Nanobots are a rare and difficult CBM to obtain in vanilla, something that at bare minimum is probably not obtainable in most circumstances until you're several weeks into the game. The odds of you actually surviving with no healing ability up until the point that you would find nanobots, I just don't really see that as viable. But then also, you know, I'm not the best Cataclysm player. So although I think that this trait is absolutely fine to exist in the game, I think that it's probably the most difficult trait that is available to players at character start. Now I would never enjoy playing with this personally and I think that for uh, purposes of game balance slash enjoyment it would probably make more sense if this simply disabled healing items and forced you to live only with your character's natural healing. Uh, but next up today from Zombie Killer, we got the ability to move zones in the zone manager menu. Probably you're familiar with placing zones. We've talked about various expansions to this feature in previous shows and now we have the ability to move our zones after we play them. Previously, if you wanted to move a zone, you would have to remove it from your list and re-add it, and this was true for both the position of the zone, but also for the shape and size of the zone as well. Well now, you can highlight the zone you want to edit with your indicator and then hit enter. This will open a menu with several options for tweaking that particular zone. The bottom option here, which is move position, lets you move the zone in its current form to a new spot. The option above that, called edit position, lets you change the shape and the size of the zone. There are other other options here but those are probably the two that you're going to use the most and as always just make sure that you save the zones when you exit the zone manager menu. There's really not much to say about this. This is just a, a pure quality of life change that will be quite handy I think. I can't tell you the number of times that I've placed a zone in the wrong position or didn't make it wide enough or whatever. The only downside here is that currently there doesn't seem to be a way to move a zone and then attach it to a vehicle part which is you know it's not a big issue. It may be resolved in the future from what Zombiezilla has 
said. Now, additionally, as a niche case, there is also an option here called edit options. This appears to be for farm plots. So if you assign the wrong seed to a farm plot, you can change it in here. There may be other things that this option does, but that was what I saw, the farm plot thing. Next up, we've got a new menu, the medical menu from Red Rose Dial Tone. Now, this is a good change, but I am irritated by it for an irrational reason. So essentially, we now have a menu that will be used for medical treatments, and it is accessed presently by pressing the capital N key by default. This is why I'm irritated. N was previously the control for collapsing the minimap. So I have a ton of muscle memory from five years of playing the game of using the N key for that. Now, someone did point out that this control was unbound previously, which I do vaguely remember us talking about them unbinding the collapse minimap key, but now that it's been taken away from me, I'm kind of annoyed. Now, ignoring my craziness, the good side of this PR is that we needed a medical menu. I know people complain about how many menus we have, but we actually need more for different things. And the medical menu is valuable because of the future plans for expanding wounds and surgeries. More than that, apparently this menu shows information that was previously not available in other menus. On that note, as I was checking this, I saw that the encumbrance panel in the character menu also has a ton more information than it did previously, so I'm not really sure when that happened. But anyway, the main draw of this for me is the prospect for things in the future. I'm still very excited for the wound expansion, just as I have been excited for like the two years that they've been talking about it. The menu is nice, and the feedback that I've heard from other players is that they like it, but I can't help but think about what this will look like in the future as we have more options to treat wounds and things like that. Uh, so yeah, medical menu, hooray. You know, I'm a little salty about it replacing my keybind for collapsing the minimap, something I'm sure at least a few of you will also feel. But ultimately, that's really not a very big deal when this actually adds a lot of value and potential value in the future to the game. Now next up from Sather, we have some additions to low tech things in the game. Now I'm basically just mentioning this so that you can go and look at this PR if you want to learn more. Now I'm personally not a fan of expanding the in the woods crafting or low tech items. I don't really enjoy that kind of game personally in Cataclysm, so I don't have the knowledge necessary to give like a inaccurate criticism or praise, that sort of thing. This PR did add things both to the core game, but also to the In the Woods mod, and I really don't want to sift through what went into which file. I have some faith, though, that things would not have been added to vanilla if they were not appropriate for vanilla. Anyway, there will be a link in the description down below if you want to look this over and see what all was added, and uh, of course those of you who play with the mod would know a lot better than I do about the value of this PR. Next up from Illison, we've got a rework to mass graves in the game. Now, I don't especially remember what these looked like before, but based on the talk in the PR, I guess they were just all big, uncovered pits filled with corpses. This change reworked them in several ways, but my main takeaway is that they are now in varying stages of burial, meaning that some of them are sealed, some of them are opened, and there will be some that just have like large piles of bodies nearby that were in the process of being placed into these graves. Now in my testing, I did notice there are still a ton of enemies that spawn here, so do be wary of them as you approach. When I debug the location into existence, I actually could take several steps before the enemies would appear, which makes me think that they're actually not enemy spawns, but rather some of the corpses are being reanimated as I come closer. So this was either a location that was abandoned before all the bodies could be pulped, or it was done at a time when people did not realize that the zombies could reanimate if you don't pulp them. Now this is very unlikely to happen in regular play, I just wanted to point it out. Also, in general, I don't like locations that spawn tons of enemies like this, but also, you know, these are mass graves. Mass graves would be a place that would likely have a bunch of reanimated corpses, so, you know, I don't have much to say here. Anyway, it's a nice little change to mass graves. There are actually several layouts in this change, but they can all be summed up. As I said, some of them are open, some are closed, some are partially filled, and I'm not really sure how the game determines what to spawn for a map extra, so I don't know which one will be most common, you know, as you're going around. However, I have seen these plenty of times previously while playing, so you're probably going to happen across a couple you know, depending on the length of your game. All right, next up from Aaron, we've got a change to the cudgel and the plank, as well as a few additions of like low tier club weapons. So first let's talk about what all the PR did. Number one, it changed the cudgel recipe. Cudgels now take significantly longer to craft. They require the carving proficiency. They can no longer be made from sticks and they require fabrication too. Now these things are pretty significant changes since the cudgel has always been a really low tier go-to weapon for a lot of players. Since it's no longer craftable at skill level 
level zero, Aaron has also added two new clubs, the wooden club and the large wooden club. Both of these are basically what the cudgel was previously, a fast craft that can be done at skill level zero, and both are made specifically from planks, and the large one, presumably, you know, because it's just really long, is a flimsy weapon. Now those are my main takeaways from this PR and what I think most of you will care about. There's other stuff here, like planks were made flimsy and it spun off into another PR addressing some things about the uh, precise strike technique. Uh, but mostly that's probably stuff you're less concerned about. Now I have thoughts about this PR and mostly I, you know, I'm a little conflicted on how to feel about it. It's the same reasoning that I used previously when we talked about the nerfs to the staff weapons. The idea here is that because they are made from planks or sticks or whatever, that these weapons are suboptimal and therefore they need to be nerfed. The problem is that we don't have a mechanism in the game to fix this. In other words, is making a club from a plank good? Well, no, it would be terrible, but there's literally no other way for us to make a wooden club in the game. All of our wooden weapons come from planks or sticks, and we don't have a proficiency for selecting good wood versus bad wood. We don't have a differentiation between hardwood and softwood, you know, to determine what would be good for a wooden weapon. So actually, I don't think we should rehash all of this discussion. We did just talk about this when we talked about the staff nerfs in the game. Now, I'm not as mad about this change as I was about the staff change, and that's primarily because Aaron did add, like, uh, replacement items for the cudgel after it was nerfed. But anytime someone discusses the viability of wooden weapons and specifically says something like, oh well they're made from planks so they would be bad, that's not a good argument because that is true for every wooden weapon we can make. Pretty much everything in the game comes from a plank or a stick, so none of them should be good weapons by this logic. Anyway, I guess I'm losing my train of thought at this point. I guess, I don't know, this just makes me wish that we had some of the things I mentioned above, like the ability to select quality of wood for different crafts. I don't think the cudgel is in a good place. This is a nerf, but it still feels overpowered to me if we're using the logic that weapons made from planks should be flimsy and not ideal. It just feels to me like these nerfs should not be happening until we have a way for players to make like a, a properly manufactured high quality wooden weapon. I don't know if all that makes sense. My mind wandered and I lost my uh like I'm stupid so let's just move on. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Next up from Illison, we've got an expansion of a character over at the hub. Now I don't usually cover NPCs or factions in a lot of detail. Somehow it feels uh, like more spoilery than talking about other types of content but I mentioned this one specifically. I mean I guess it's it's for a silly reason, really. This NPC is called Cranberry and is a mercenary at the hub. And I guess a lot of people think that Cranberry is a reference to Candlebury, who is one of the devs and did a lot of work on the hub. So uh, they also make a Cuticlism or Cutaclism, I'm not sure how you say that. It, it's a tile set that's included with the game. But anyway, I guess a lot of people think that this is a reference to the dev, but it actually wasn't. And that confusion was bothering some people, so I thought I would just lend my tiny bit of influence towards clearing that up. It's just a person named Cranberry. It's not a reference to a dev, you know, I don't know. I just figured I'd mention it. Next up from a noob in disguise, we've got a handful of new CBMs. About half of them are negative or faulty and half of them have some sort of benefit. You probably mostly only care about the good ones, which would be the oil generator, which produces power from lamp oil. It, you know, it works the same as the other generators that require an input. There's also a trickle charger, which is uh, going to provide you with ongoing power generation very, very slowly. It's completely passive. There's uh, no input or anything like that. It just very, very slowly recharges your batteries. However, it is worth noting that this cannot be turned off. So if you play Magiclism and you're used to like keeping your batteries empty for spell casting, that's not going to work with the CBM. But again, it does regenerate power very, very slowly. And then there are the recoil compensators, which lower your recoil when using firearms. The reduction is 35%, which is significant, but recoil is has never really been a concern for me, at least in my opinion opinion in terms of gun selection. If I found it, I would install it, but it's also, I mean, it's not game breaking, right? It's not like nanobots in terms of the impact that it will have on your game. 35% recoil reduction, probably not that big of a deal. Now, the other three are intended to be negative CBMs. Mostly they are minor in the terms of the nuisance that they cause. Although one of them does give you radiation, which might be difficult for you to purge at a sustainable rate. I don't have much to say about any of these. I think they're all perfectly fine. Nothing game breakingly good or bad. 
add, it's just a simple expansion of CBMs, and I'm a pretty big fan of Bionics, so I'm pretty happy anytime that I see new ones coming to the game. Oh, and I guess that's it for the video. I feel like I had another thing here, and I feel like I'm really forgetting something that I wanted to talk about, but, but nothing's coming to mind. So yeah, I think that's a wrap on the video. Again, we are moving towards feature freeze in preparation of the next stable release. So at some point in the near future, content is going to taper off. We're going to have a lot less to talk about in the show, and then, you know, the show will go on hiatus once everything grinds to a halt. We should have a few more shows before that happens though, and of course we will talk about it as things progress. For now, everyone thank you for watching. Hopefully the video helped you learn something new and gave you something of value, and I of course will be back in a couple of weeks with another episode.